Here are just some thoughts on drawing grass with pastels. So one thing I like to do is have a reference photo printed out the size of same size as my drawing. So that way I use it to scale things on my on my portraits. So this is a picture of a dog I'm drawing for portrait commission, Nellie. And you might be able to tell that I've in Photoshop, I have put her on just a regular grass background that I also taken a picture of that day um, because I liked it better. She was kind of sitting on plain dirt and on a hill on the other reference photo. So I liked this one because it, it's kind of blurry in the background and it has some shadow lines, but it's also really in the sun, which will match with her because she's got half of her face in the sun so it, it made sense to use this background and I don't like drawing grass I don't know many people that do but if you have a fuzzy background then you can kind of use the shapes and colors so what I do first is I'll take you over to my drawing I put down a base layer of pan pastels so that's here and I just was trying to go for the darkest areas, the darkest colors in my reference photo. And I'm finding that I didn't go dark enough now, but it's, so I'm just trying to, trying to work with that. It's easier to draw the light on the dark with the pastels. So that's why I would recommend you make it pretty dark or at least a medium toned greens before you start. And then this side I've already done. Um, so I'm just blocking in colors and then smearing it with my finger. So I haven't smeared on this right side yet, um, which I'm getting ready to do. I'll put down um, the dark color first and then I'm just trying to, I'm not even looking at the reference photo on my iPad because I don't care how accurate the color is. I'm kind of looking at my printout and halfway matching the colors and kind of squinting my eyes. I'm not trying to get crazy, although this is taking longer than I would like. I have a, a very dark color that matches the dark on the reference and then I'm putting in some more green and I see some kind of more chartreuse greens popping in through here. And then I found that using, um, this is a Stabilo Carbothello, I think it's a cream, it's 692, but using that to do the lighter bits, because there's quite a bit of highlights, it's kind of a very sunny photo, so things are washed out a little bit, but I found that using the yellow is more effective even when I'm seeing kind of white or light gray in the reference photo because the light gray is making it too chalky. I've used it a few times. It looks too, uh, I don't know, white, I guess. So the yellow for me is working pretty well. So I'm just putting in little scribbles of that here and there where I see um, lighter bits in the reference photo. And then the fun part comes when you can smear all this with your finger. And I found it's better to not have a really sharp pencil for these blurry bits because you kind of, you want it to kind of smush on the paper, not be blades of grass because you can't see blades of grass that far away. So I'll just, I'm just using the reference as an idea. And I also find that when you're staring at this for a long time, it gets, it starts to look bad. And then if you, um, I think you just get fatigued at looking at it, take a break and come back and look at it again later and then hopefully you'll find that 
You like the way it looks. So that's kind of how I tackle the smeared portion. And you might have to go over some bits again. To make it. But in general, I just want it to be as light as a reference photo. I don't want it any darker because the picture of the dog is really sunlit, so it wouldn't make sense for her to be in a really shady, uh, grassy area. Although this portion in, in the back right here is a little bit shadier, and then it starts to get a lot lighter down here. So I was thinking that maybe I could use the unisense for the grass, but I tried that and it, the problem was I just couldn't get it to work and then they are so, they put so much pastel down, if you run into problems, you can't really, at, at, a, at a certain point you kind of, you fill the tooth of the paper and you're just pushing pastel around the paper, which is, is not good. So I had to start over and I decided I would use the pencils because I've had success with the pencils before, although it's a large area, so I just decided to settle in and hopefully it will be worth it, but grass is a lot of trial and error, I've found. Well, I guess a lot of artwork is, but sometimes you just have to keep fiddling with it until you see what looks okay. And using just the, the pencils and the pan pastels as a base allows me to do that. I'm just adding some yellow in here. Because they are harder. They don't put as much pastel down, so I can rework the same area if I'm not happy with it. Alright, I think I'm ready to smush it. So I'm not applying, applying a ton of pressure because I'll lose everything. Another tip um, for doing the grass is you can do one area of it and then move on, always telling yourself that you can come back and change it later if you need to because it might become overworked. Well, at least I know I do that. So now I'm just gonna, so that's not bad. So if I'm looking at it next to the reference file, let's see if I can get better. So it is darker. And probably what I'll do so I'm going to need to, just looking at the reference photo now, I'm going to need to lighten this area more. And this definitely, but I haven't started on that side. But I think that's okay. So the purpose of this drawing is this dog. So I also need to remind myself that to not get too crazy on the grass. The grass is not the focal point, although I will have to draw more blades down here at the bottom. And I'll record some of that as I get down there. <laughs> 